So I'm taking a break from uploading my quote unquote movie for Final Fantasy 7 Remake uh, just to throw out a few opinions about how I feel about the game now that I've completed it a few days ago. And yeah, I did get the game early. I got it around April, April the 3rd. And listen, man, I was a little bit too hyped. So I did burn through the game day after day. And now I'm here to tell you guys a little bit about my experience during playing and after playing of course because I have seen on the internet a lot of people have been talking about the length of the game and how you know it's not 100 hours plus so it's not worth playing and obviously it's only about Midgar so you know it's not going to be a complete experience and to that I say pretty wrong actually because in my opinion I did feel as though I had a beginning middle and end even though I know the story is not going to end um, so to get into details without any spoilers the game sort of adds things here and there in between the sections that are in the original game to sort of twist the story in a direction that I didn't think it was gonna go in but now after playing I understand fully why they did it because most of us already know what the story is about um, I've played the game personally the original game um, some people may have not played the original game but they still seen the characters and heard of things about the game already so you kind of get the gist of what's happening in the current story so the, the the things they've added into the game i want to say change the story drastically from the original so the story is not going to be like a completely different scenario from the original one it's still the same story but it does have elements in it that you know someone who has played the game will be caught by surprise at um that one thing without spoilers because this, this, this is in the trailers and stuff like that and in the demo as well is uh, the appearance of Sephiroth so early in the game uh, you see him uh, sort of torment Cloud because Cloud gets all these visions and stuff of him his appearance in the game early is not present in the original uh, and he sort of steers the story if you know what I mean it well, doesn't steer the story but he steers the direction that Cloud and the rest of the gang kind of go in throughout the story uh, but you know there's a few surprises especially at the end of the game where they throw in a, a few pieces of lore that kind of I don't know what it, I don't know exactly how to describe it but it makes me curious to see what they will do in the next part of the game because the things that happen at the end of this game uh, can be quite confusing to see uh, because I, I don't exactly know if they were real events or if they were part of this game sort of Redire slight redirection of different parts of the story and whether or not those things will stay present in the next part it's very hard to explain but <laughs> without spoiling it but I will make a spoiler video and talking about it but yeah the, it, it makes me curious especially about what's gonna happen in the next game who's there door oh, wait It's over! That's my line. Now I just rambled on for three minutes talking about the story, but I didn't actually talk about the, the gameplay of the game, which is the meat of the game itself. And that is improved from the original game, actually. You can now upgrade equipment, which I didn't think you could do in the last one. It's been a few years since I played the last one, but I don't think you could do. You can only, like, you obviously attach materials to stuff as well, like in the original game. Uh, but upgrading the weapons themselves I don't believe you could do that but in this game you do have a lot of things to do um, each weapon has a sort of attribute tree where you get uh, SP points I believe they were called or AP points SP is it I think it's AP for material SP for weapons I don't know uh, but yeah you get these points that you can use to spend to upgrade your weapons here and there uh, and each weapon has a specific number of trees that you can unlock by leveling up the weapon itself and each weapon comes with their own ability as well which you can unlock to use generally if you use the weapon long enough right uh, well if you not use the weapon long enough if you use that ability that's attached to the weapon long enough you get to use it for just as a base ability for whoever what character whichever character you have so in that sense they've expanded the combat a lot and it's definitely fun to get into any kind of fight I never felt really um, tired of fighting anybody it, especially in the sequences where you're you know you're fighting a lot of enemies you're fighting hordes and hordes of enemies well not hordes in a sense but you know you're going through one battle one after the other one after the other without doing anything else um so that part is really good the only thing in this game that uh, you could say the game being about only midgar kind of dampens the experience is the side quest in the game and obviously since it is only about midgar there is only 
a certain amount of things that you could pad in between the story moments to make it not feel too bloated because uh, for instance if they try to make this a uh, hundred hour plus game only midgar they would have to pad out all the in between sections between story moments and then you kind of lose all the urgency that is in the story because in the original game obviously with midgar it's sort of a fast paced part of the game where things continuously keep happening and the story keeps progressing rapidly and if you were to put too many moments of downtime in between them you don't get that sense of danger and urgency that uh you need in this section of the story so um and i believe they did try their best to spread it out in between the different sections of the story which it, mainly it's like three different parts where you get downtime uh each part being in varied length from each other uh but in terms of the side quests, it doesn't really... They're not going to be revolutionary side quests. Like, they, they are the general fetch quests or find these three things or, you know, go beat this enemy for me kind of uh, side quests. But not too extremely interesting, but some of them are. Some of them do have uh, characters who uh, who probably will appear in later games as well. Uh, especially this character called Kyrie. Uh, she's sort of... Um, she's an interesting character. I won't say too much about it because obviously this, they have a specific storyline with her and someone she's related to um, in with, in between the side quests. But other than that, other characters are just like sort of, you know, NPCs, filler NPCs that you don't really remember or talk about later on in the game. And in terms of replayability for this game, it does have some actually. Uh, you unlock hard mode after completing the game, which gives you an incentive to play it again, as well as having extra items and things that you can collect that are only available in hard mode and some different uh, activities you can do, uh, mainly from the Colosseum. If you know about the original game, you had the Colosseum underneath the um, underneath War Market. Uh, where you could fight enemies, you know, hordes, different levels of enemies and things like that. They do have that in this game, and they do have more that you can do in hard mode, which are definitely harder to beat, which I haven't beat them all yet, but I will do in my time. And there's also some other type of arena from someone else, which I won't say anything too particular about, but you will run into this character and uh, you'll do missions for them as well. And you can you unlock more things to do for them in the hard mode as well so there's definitely things to do i'm approaching the 60 hour mark in the game now and i haven't collected everything because i want 100 percent everything so um there, there is definitely a lot to do if you're invested in the in the world and the characters in the game then you're definitely going to stick around after you've finished it to do more things you get a chapter select as well which you can uh fiddle around with a few things but the only thing that is sort of an issue is that this game does have those sections where you're forced to walk and you know when you're playing a game again you don't really want to have to do those sections because you're ready when you're playing it for the first time in my opinion i was immersed and i wasn't really you know annoyed by it but then when you play it the second time you really don't you just want to get to the next part right so in my opinion i think i mean in 2020 in the new decade we need to get rid of those sections where you're forced to walk and do stuff like that and just make them cutscenes instead because i'd rather just watch it rather than having to hold forward and just basically do nothing else but do that like if there was things to collect or 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 people to fight during those sections then i guess that makes sense but in this case in this game there's just so many sections where it'll just make you walk or it'll make you crawl underneath things or climb over things and it takes a lot of time. So that that is the only thing that I can see getting annoying when you're replaying the game. Uh, but everything else you can skip uh, pretty easily. So it, that's not really an issue for me. But it, it isn't too big of an issue, but it is like a slight annoyance. This sucks. To end the video off, I just wanted to talk about the next game, right? And how things are gonna happen and play out. Uh, I'm really excited to see what they're gonna do, even more so than I was before, because I was already excited to play this game. I mean, I think a lot of people are really excited to play this game, but after having played this one and seeing how they've told the story, seeing the way their characters interact with each other and how they've expanded upon certain characters in this game, especially Jesse, like in this game, you get so much more of Jesse and I love every, every minute of it, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> Welcome home, honey. Took your sweet time. You know, in in the next game, if they continue this level of quality for just the the scenes with the different characters, the set pieces in the game, if they continue that sort of quality, then the next game is probably going to be even better than this one because this one's just on Midgar. Like, this is the beginning stage of Final Fantasy VII. Like, this isn't even the the real meat of the story. So, 
when they get into that part, then this this thing is gonna go crazy. Um, and I do believe that it, if they made it a longer game, if they made it 100 hours long, it wouldn't have this level of quality that uh, in the game. Because I think when you condense something, you can perfect it, right? You can you can put so much quality into it, and if you try and stretch it out too much, then you start losing stuff, and you, you kind of pad the time, or you know the set pieces won't be as uh, extravagant and things like that bombastic as well this game the ending I mean Tetsuya Nomura is the director of this game and you if you played any uh, Kingdom Hearts or you know Final Fantasy 15 or something like that anything that he's directed you know that he goes crazy when it comes to the end of the games and the, and the finales and stuff like that so yeah this is definitely an experience to I think everybody should enjoy so if you're on the fence about getting this game because you think it you know you play a lot of J JRPGs that are like 100 plus hours long and you know some games are justifiably that long because I remember playing Fan uh, Persona 5. I love that game; it's one of my favorite games ever. Really, uh, I put over 100 hours into that game. But the the uh, the setting for that game it kind of warrants having that much content and stuff to do in that uh, in the city that you you're in. But in this game, I think you don't have too much to work with to to make it that long of a game, especially if it's only part of the full story. In this case, I think the time, about 30 to 40 hours, I think 47 hours for me is just because I was trying to get everything, which I didn't even manage to get everything in the game. But that 30 to 40 hour period is sort of the perfect time to have a nice content field, but very high quality experience. And that's just my opinions on the game so far. Uh, let me know what you think about it if you play the game in the comment section below, or if you haven't played the game and you're waiting to play it, uh, if you want to say the reason why you haven't got it yet, or you're on the fence about it. I would like to know in the comment section as well. If you haven't already, uh, please check out the movie series I'm uploading for the game. Uh, I thought, there's no commentary in it, I thought it would just be a good idea to sort of have a, a nice viewing experience where you can just sit down, grab your popcorn and just relax and watch the story unfold. Um, because it is a very nice thing to look at, <laughs> to be honest, the game looks amazing. If you're new to the series, then this is a great way to start watching it. So yeah, if you, if you want to check that out, it'll be in the description below or on the screen. Whatever I figure out. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great day and doing well in this sort of quarantine time. And I will see you guys in the next video.